What's up beauties? Welcome back to Holy Hair. In this video, it's just going to be a salon vlog. I am going to be doing my hair and my sister's hair. I'm bleaching my roots today. I get a lot of questions on what formula I use for my roots, so I'm breaking everything down for you. And then I'm going to be doing my sister's hair, so we're gonna be moving up two hand-tied rows in her hair, and we're gonna be doing the hidden bead method. So we're gonna be hiding the beads in each row, and in each row of her hair, I'm doing five wefts. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I place those wefts. So if you're interested in learning a little something and hanging out with me and my sister today while we do our hair, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. Let's go, let's me, let's hit, let's go. Holy hair, let's go, let's go, let's go. So my sister's on the way, but I'm gonna get a head start on my hair. So I'm gonna be, obviously, doing my roots today. Here is a look at how far they've grown out. And it is time to do these roots. I've got my formula all mixed up. I'm going to be using Schwarzkopf Blonde Me with um, 20 and 40 volume. I mixed equal parts 20 and 40 to make kind of like a 35 volume. And I did a two to one ratio with the developer. So I did 30 grams of lightener and 60 grams of developer. And then I put in two packets of Sweet and Low so that it does not burn my scalp. And then I also put in um, some Olaplex. So I got that all mixed in. And then I'm actually going to put on some of this Olaplex bonding oil just all over my hair because I want to give it some protection as I'm coloring it. So I'm putting a good amount on my hair, just kind of like root to end. I try not to get any overlapping, but um, if I accidentally get any lightener on any strands of my hair. I just want to have some sort of protection on there. And as you can see, I have my mirror set up. I'm going to go ahead and get my hair all sectioned so that I can start applying my lightener on my roots. So I like to section it out into four sections. And I always start in the back. I do the back two sections first before I go on to the front of my hair. Because I feel like the back is darker naturally than the front, so I want it to sit on longer in the back. All right, so I have my sectioning on my sides, and then I'm just gonna split the back down the middle into two sections, and I'm gonna start applying my lightener. So I like to do the perimeter of each section first, and then I go into the interior of the section. So that is how I'm gonna be applying my lightener on each four of the sections that I have on my head, and then I will put a processing cap on and process for about 30 to 40 minutes and I usually go under the dryer for at least half of that time. And I like to lay the lightener on pretty thick because you do not want it to dry out.
finished applying my roots. Sissy is here. We're going to get started on her hair. But while I process, I'm going to take the Olaplex number two and I'm just going to apply a generous amount on the ends of my hair and just kind of twist them out of the way, put a cap on, and let this process while I start my sister's hair. Okay, so we're going to be moving up her extensions. As you can see, they're pretty grown out. So she has two rows, but there's 10 wefts in here. So we're going to be laying them out, and I'm going to show you guys how we lay out the wefts in order to get a lot of hair in in just two rows. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes, and I like to kind of bring the lightener down a little bit towards the end of the process because I just feel like it helps to give a better blend and so there's no harsh lines from touching it up and I just do this for the last like five to ten minutes. I don't leave this on for long. And we are going to do a Malibu treatment on my hair after we rinse the lightener out just because I have a ton of like toner built up on my ends and I wanna try to get a little bit of that off so that I can have a cleaner canvas to tone it again. So after we rinse this, we're gonna get, we're gonna do the Malibu treatment and um, just to get off any buildup, and then a couple clarifying shampoos to see if we can get some of this um, toner off my ends, and then we will tone it after that. See what color we get to, and then we'll figure out what we want to do for the toner. All right, so we got my Malibu treatment sitting on. I'm using this Quick Fix. Um, it says you only have to leave it on for five minutes, but we're gonna leave it on for a little bit longer, see what happens, and then go from there. We're having a little snack break. Sushi break. Sushi break. And then I'm gonna start on my sister's hand tied extensions. Okay, so we're starting on the bottom row of her hair, and I have her sectioned out right here. This is what her sectioning is gonna look like. And you wanna make sure that you're at least two fingers above the ear whenever you're doing extensions. So I'm taking... <laughs> Can't... So I'm taking sections that are about three-fourths of an inch wide, and I'm kind of scooping down a little bit just to give a little more hair in the bead, and then we are going to just pull the bead through. You want to make sure that the bead lays flat against your client's scalp. So whenever you're clamping it down, you want to turn the pliers up against the client's scalp. You don't want to clamp it like this. You want to clamp it like this. Does it feel too tight? No. So you want it to be tight, but you don't want it to be too tight. And then we're just going to do the same thing all around her head for the beads. Okay, so we got her beads all in, and I am going to be laying out her wefts. All right, so I'm gonna be pinning up all of this hair that we have in the beads first. 
so that I can lay out the ones on the bottom. So I'm just going to pin this hair up. And then we're going to start pinning our first row. So we have five wefts, so I'm just doing two on the bottom, and then I'm going to bring this hair down, and the beads are going to be in the middle. And then I'm going to stack on top the other three wefts. And as I'm layering these in, I'm kind of starting from one end and then going all the way to the other on either side. And see how this one doesn't make it all the way to the end? That's totally fine. And yes, there is just casually a towel on my head. I'm like sitting here editing, cracking up. I didn't even think about it when we were filming, but we rinsed the color out of my hair and we have not toned it yet, so I'm not drying it. And uh, yeah, there's just a, just a towel on my head, no big deal. Um, but I get a little crazy with these pin curl clips. I just want to make sure that everything is secure and in place, and so I, do a bunch of clipping with these little pin curl clips and then I go in with some bigger clips here in a minute and um, just to like hold it in a little more securely. Okay, so we have these all clipped in and the ones that we have clipped underneath the beads, they're secured in with those little clips. So I'm not gonna clip on top. I'm just going to leave them like that so that um, Everything stays in place for us to go ahead and sew. I have my double string going with the um, curved needle and I like to do a double string whenever I sew because I feel like it's more secure and it's easier to secure it on either end of the hair. So you wanna make sure that your wefts are all laying really flat and you know tight and when I say tight I mean not loose and hanging down a little bit you want to make sure they're just up right where you want them sewn and they're tight up there I took two wing spans like the length of your both of your arms of yarn and then I folded it in half and I tied the end in a knot after I went through the, um, what do you call, the needle. I'm starting at the end here, and I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be sewing it on either side of the bead and underneath the bead as I go in each section, and I'm gonna be making sure that I'm going through all of the wefts, even the wefts that we have underneath the beads. So I do the first stitch right there, and then I'm gonna go on the end, on the corner, and then I'm gonna go into the rest of her hair. So in order to kind of make sure that you're getting the wefts that are underneath the beads, whenever you go to scoop down, scoop down pretty far, a little bit further than you think, to make sure that you are getting around the wefts that are underneath. When you're sewing and you have wefts underneath the beads and you want to make sure you're obviously getting those wefts, you can take your hand and go underneath as you are sewing 
this through and you can feel that you're scooping it under all of those wefts. So you wanna just make sure you're getting the thread through all of those wefts and that's one way to do that. So I'm gonna show you again, I'm just kind of like feeling underneath and I'm holding all of her wefts and I'm feeling to where I'm at and I am stringing this through and then just making sure I am scooping the needle and thread all the way under all of those wefts. And this just takes practice, you guys. Like if you're just starting out doing hand-tied extensions, don't get discouraged. It's not an easy thing to learn and you'll tweak things as you go along just like anything with hair like we're always tweaking things we're always learning we're always growing we're always changing things that's what i love about the hair industry is that you learn from your mistakes and on the next time you can do things differently Okay, so as I come to secure the end, I like to kind of go in at a diagonal on the ends here because I feel like that just makes it lay really, really flat. And so I do a couple like that and then I go backwards like one or two stitches so that you get a really flat, secure part at the end here. Okay, so all we're gonna do to secure our sewing is we're going to cut the string, and then since we double strung it, you're just gonna take the two, you can't even see the string, you're just gonna take the two strings and you're going to tie it in like a triple knot. You can double knot it if you want. I like to triple knot it. And then just trim the excess off. And then what we're going to do now just to kind of finish this section off is I'm going to comb the hair down make sure we don't have any knots or anything. And then we're gonna lift all of this upwards and see these little pieces here that are, this is just hair from underneath that got pulled up into the sewing. So we're just gonna pull those hairs out so she doesn't have any tugging those and it'll give you a really clean section all right so we got all of our sewing done and as you can see the beads are completely hidden you cannot see them at all from either side of the wefts they're in the middle of these and the hair is all securely sewn in. Okay, so obviously my roots are a little yellow. So this is gonna be my raw lift after I have lightened my roots. And this dark right here, I just wanna point out, I did a root shadow um, like three weeks ago with the 8VB and that's just what this is. So it's this isn't like brown hair. It looks really dramatic and weird compared to the lightened pieces, but I'm not worried about it because um, it's gonna blend in and it's gonna all blend. So it's totally not a big deal. So here's the game plan. So I'm gonna mix 8VB to tone my roots, and I'm gonna mix this with clear to dilute it a little bit because I want it to be more like a level nine. 
And then for my ends, I'm gonna do equal parts 10T and 10P. And when I mix my root color, I'm gonna be mixing it with the Shades EQ gel processing solution because it just makes it thicker to apply on your rotage. Okay, so I'm just gonna apply my roots first and then I'm gonna apply my ends. And I'm just doing it the same way that I did my bleach touch up. And the cool thing about the toner is you can see it processing so quickly. As you can see, it's already changing and I literally just put it on this side. In the back, it looks a little bit more like purpley instead of blue, like when you first do it, but it's gonna take away any of the yellow tones that we have going on here. Okay, so after I get it all applied, I'm just taking a wide tooth comb and I'm just kind of pulling it down a little bit all over. And I'm gonna put on some of the Olplex number two, just a little bit so that the color stretches a long way. I'm just gonna run this through my ends real quick. You wanna make sure that you blend transition. seamlessly can stretch and blend. All right, and then after I get this all applied, I'm gonna let it process in a cap for 20 minutes and I'll show you guys my finished results. So before we finish my hair, I gotta finish my sister's hair so we're going to go on to her top row here and I'm doing the same method that I showed you guys for the bottom row and I'm just going along placing her wefts below and above the beads and I'm going to go ahead and get them all sewn in and we're doing this row really close to her hairline so I did it at a diagonal at the front of her hairline and I'll show you guys kind of what that looks like after it's sewn in but um, the placement's a little bit different and we um, have the beads in the middle just like that and then I'm going to place um, some more wefts on top get her sewn in and I'll show you guys her hair when it's finished <laughs>
So as you can see, we have these go pretty far up, um, but since they're at a diagonal, we're still gonna have a good amount of hair coming down to cover them. So we don't have any issues with blending. Her hair is dark too, so it's easier to blend extensions in with dark hair, but I love how full this looks around her face and looks very seamless and you cannot see the beads at all. This is what my hair is going to look like after I finish coloring it. Huge difference. I know that the roots look a little bit purple, but they'll fade out to more of like a platinum y blonde. I wanted more of just like a blonde look. Um, I felt like my hair was like super, super gray silver, and I just wanted it to be a little bit more blonde. I always need to tone my hair a little bit darker, and when I say darker, I mean just having more of that like violet blue tone to it, just to kind of cancel out any yellow tones, because whenever I first bleach my hair, it always comes out like really yellowy, which a lot of people's hair does, so I just need like that extra little bit, so I feel like when I tone it with this, it comes out obviously purple to begin with and then it f gradually fades out um, to like more of a platinum blonde. But I don't mind it. I um, actually love like the different colors. I think it's super fun to have like kind of just a little bit of a purple shadow root and I always get so many compliments on this purple shadow root from my clients. It fades really quickly. It's super like temporary. And I just also like threw in a couple waves with this waver. This is the first time I've used this one. It's my sister's, um, but I know she got it on Amazon. So I will link this in the description below so you guys can try it out. It was super easy to use and I literally only did like a couple sections. My hair is like naturally kind of wavy. So I feel like this is like such a great option for me because it's super quick and it looks like I actually did something to my hair. So yeah, this is going to be my finished result. So I hope you guys enjoyed this salon vlog type video with me and my sister doing each other's hair. If you guys want to see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Let's go, let's meet, let's hit, let's go.